church at 6.30, okay? So if you would, parents, put that in your calendar, uh, hanging out here at the church on August the 13th at 6.30, okay? And uh, it says here, bring your friends. There's going to be pizza, ice cream, and I'm sure they'll be having some games and things like that. Also, uh, Brother Austin is going to be going up uh, to Trinity uh, Baptist in Auburn. Okay, they're having a service up there at 7 o'clock on Friday night. Uh, so if you're interested in going with Brother Austin, uh, get with him right after the service. Let him know so he can plan either uh, if he needs to take a van uh, or whatever. I would encourage you to go if you can, all right? Also, our Prove God is up to 30000 amen? We're up to 30400 on our Prove God offering, amen? Uh, so we're praying, uh, see what the Lord's going to do in this next week, and uh, I believe He can do it, amen? That's what this is about, us proving Him, and that uh, he, He's able to do abundantly and above all that we could ever ask or think, Amen? Amen. All right. I do. Uh, I do have a phone again. Amen. Uh, it's finally back on. Praise the Lord. And uh, it's been a pretty good few days. Amen. Uh, nice and quiet. No phone calls or nothing. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but I. I uh, it is back on. So if you do need to reach me, uh, you can do so. All right. Um, Prayer request coming up. Do remember, Brother Ed, he's having his procedure. Uh, give me that date again, Brother Ed. August the 9th. All right, so if you would pray for that. Having his procedure done August the 9th. And uh, remember, Miss Joanne's nephew, R.C., uh, if you would. And uh, let's see, who else? There was another one that we mentioned today during the prayer meeting. I think Brother Jerry... I think is having a procedure done here in a few days, I think, is what I was told. Um, and I think that may be that may be it as far as new ones. And remember Brother Ed Lynn. He's having some, some problems with his uh, um, his feeling in his in his hands and in his legs, his feet. Could be a result of the uh, treatments that he's taking, uh, so they're going to try to start doing some tests on that. Try to figure out what's causing him to not have any feeling in his in his hands or, or legs or feet. Brother Todd, uh, remember Brother Todd's. Friend of Brother Todd's name, David Frost. They uh, found a, a mass in his in, the, in his stomach. So if y'all would, in his liver, right? Pancreas and liver. Anybody have anything else you'd like to add? James McDaniel picked up the mic today, but he asked me to. Add James Mooney to the prayer list, but he didn't say why. Okay. James Mooney, friend of James McDaniel. Anybody have anything else? I uh, do remember our family this week will be heading out for vacation and. Uh, Pray for us as we're traveling. I think the Wallaces are going, and uh, the, the Stricklands will be traveling as well. A bunch of folks will be on the road. I don't think there's Brother Todd. Y'all going anywhere this week? Yeah. <laughs> a couple weeks, amen. Uh, so just remember, uh, quite a few folks going to be traveling and uh, going going on vacation, and also school starting back, amen. And uh, we need to really be in prayer for our our kids as they're going back to school and uh, a lot of our kids are starting school uh, for the first time so we need to be in prayer for uh, for our teenagers young people as they're going to be starting back to school here in the next few weeks that the Lord would uh, would really 
uh, put a hedge of protection around them, uh, especially um, especially in these schools today. Amen. Uh, so let's pray for that as well. If you would write that down on your prayer list. To remember that all the teachers and students going back to school. All right. All right. If that's it, let's uh, let's get around the altar tonight if you're able to. We'll spend a few minutes in prayer if you would like to come get around the altar and pray. And I'm going to have Brother Jeremy Wallace pray for us tonight. Amen. He just looks like he needs to pray. Amen. Take your time, no hurry. Thank you for another opportunity to come to your house and to, to worship you, Lord, and to hear from your word. Lord, I pray that we'd never take that for granted. I pray we'd always appreciate that and the fact that we're free to do this. And Lord, I pray, Lord, uh, that you'd be with our missionaries around the, around the world, Lord, that they would uh, have your, uh, your power and your presence in their ministries. I pray, God, that you'd see, help them to see many souls saved. Lord, I pray for our church, Lord, and I thank you for what you've done here at Grace, the work you're, you're doing and continuing, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for the souls that we saw saved, Lord, during Vacation Bible School. And I pray that we continue to, uh, to see souls saved and baptized and, and uh, get involved with, in your church and serving you, Lord. God, I pray for the ones that are uh, having health problems, Lord, procedures done. The next week or two, Lord, I pray for Brother Ed, especially, Lord, that you would uh, be with him, his, be, be with his heart, Lord, and be with the doctors, give him wisdom, Lord, to handle everything properly and everything would go smoothly in that situation. Lord, I pray for Brother Ed Lynn, that the doctors would be able to, to get his uh, feelings straightened out in his, in his, in his body and his hands. And Lord, I pray that you would uh, meet with us tonight. I pray that you would... Anoint Brother Jesse, Lord, when he stands to preach. And, uh, Lord, we, he would be filled with your spirit and your power. And that we'd all get some encouragement and get some help tonight, Lord. That'll uh, help us to be better Christians and help us to serve you better. Lord Jesus, we love you. God, we thank you for everything you've done for us. I pray, God, that we'd never take you for granted. I pray, God, that we'd always be true to you. I pray we'd always make decisions, Lord, based on your, uh, your will, Lord, and your word. And I pray, God, that you would continue this work. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's turn to Exodus chapter number 25 tonight. Exodus 25. Um, this Sunday, y'all have a special, special treat coming to preach for you this Sunday. Brother Don Richards will be here preaching for us all day on Sunday, Sunday morning, Sunday night. And then uh, next Wednesday, uh, Brother Clark Herring will be coming to preach for us. And so y'all uh, y'all be in prayer for these men as they uh, are preparing to come and preach. Um, if you've never heard uh, Brother Don I would encourage you to really make sure you make sure you're here. You ought to be here anyways. Amen. 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 Be in your place. Be here, and uh, and you'll be you'll get a blessing from that. Also, Brother Clark will be a blessing to you as well. I'm sure. Exodus chapter number twenty five, and verse number twenty three. The Bible says, "Thou shalt also make a table of shittim wood. Two cubits shall be the length thereof." And a cubit the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, and make thereto a crown of gold uh, round about. And thou shalt make unto it a border, and of a breadth round about thou shalt make a golden crown to the border thereof round about. And thou shalt make for it four rings of gold, and put the rings in the four corners, and uh, that are on the four feet thereof, over against the border shall the rings be for places of the staves to bear the table, 
and thou shalt make the staves of shittim wood and overlay them with gold and uh, that the table may be born uh, with them. Uh, tonight we're going to be looking, uh, Sunday we looked at the candlesticks tonight, we're going to be looking at this table, the table of showbread and what it represents and what it means and what it, uh, how, it's, how it applies to us. And, uh, and so, um, like I said, Sunday we preached on that, uh, the candlesticks and I, and I kind of got out of order, but I kind of did it on purpose. And uh, that, that candlestick is, a, is a, the only light, as we know, in the tabernacle. It was the only source of light. Uh, there was no outside light that came in. There was no uh, exterior light. There was no light uh, coming in from the natural world. Amen. It was all the, that, that light that was uh, to be uh, fed by the Holy Spirit, which represented the oil, the oil that represented the Holy Spirit that fed that flame. And so we know uh, here that this table, uh, on the table, there's three items. We, uh, uh, together, uh, there's 12 loaves of bread. Uh, we know that there's the incense, and we know that there's the candlesticks. Amen. And, uh, and this here, this, this table, is a representation of many different things, but this table was primarily uh, built for uh, the priest to come and uh, fellowship around, uh, around it, uh, to use it to feed off of the bread. We're going to get into that in just a minute. Uh, but we know the Bible says in John chapter number 6, verse number 35, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. Amen. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Amen. Uh, so we do, we see there that this bread, uh, is this bread in verse 48 of chapter uh, 6, it says, I am the bread of life. Amen. In verse 51, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And we see that on this table uh, are these loaves of bread. Amen. Uh, and this bread represents the Lord. It represents the Word of God. And this table is a place of fellowship. It's a place for these priests, uh, these high priests to come, gather together uh, around it and to fellowship. We see the, but this is a picture of Christ as our sustainer. Amen. Uh, as someone who's going to provide for us, who's going to feed us when we're hungry. Amen. And we see that this table is a representation of that. Uh, the, and the uh, incense is a representation of our worship. And we got into the candlesticks on Sunday. But I want you to understand tonight uh, that this is a picture uh, of fellowship. The priests would gather daily around this table and they would fellowship together. Amen. <coughs> and around this table... They would fellowship, but they would only. I want you to. I want you to look at a few things tonight. Number one, that our fellowship ought to be based solely around the things of God. Amen. Our fellowship ought to be based solely around the things of God, around the Word of God, the things of God. He said, "Well, brother Jesse, you know, do we always have to do things?" Uh, everything we do, we got to do everything at church? No. <clears throat> Amen. You can, you, you can serve the Lord at a Braves game. Amen. A lot of times we, we uh, just like Sunday, a lot of us will go out to eat together and we'll fellowship together. We go different places together. But it ought to be based and, and centered around the things of God. Amen. Uh, just because uh, you get outside of these four walls uh, doesn't mean that things ought to automatically just turn worldly. Amen? Everything we do, everything we say, everything we talk about ought to be uh, based around the things of God. Amen? Based around the Word of God. And I do understand that we're living in 2022 and I'm a realist. Amen? I like to, in my words, always I say, let's just be real. I know that all the time we ain't always going to be walking around tiptoeing through the tulips and talking about God and singing how great thou art. I understand all that. Yeah. I'll be the first one to tell you that ain't me. Amen. If my wife was in here, she would have shouted amen right there. 
I, that's just not me. I'm not. I'm not that type. I. I. You know. I just. Uh, uh, you know. If I. If I laugh and smile, it's. Uh, it's pretty funny. It must be real funny. Amen. I think people that walk around smiling all the time are just weird. <laughs> Amen. My wife's like, just smile. I'm like, so you want me to just walk around? It's weird. Nobody does that. Well, some people do, and they're weirdos. Amen. She's like, well, sometimes you look at people like you just want to kill them. I said, well, maybe I do. (laughs) Amen. I'm joking. A little bit. But listen, we ought to... We, the things that we do ought to, be, ought to be centered around Christ. It ought to be centered around the things of God, the Word of God. If we're not careful, listen to me, if we're not careful and we get around certain types of people sometimes, the conversation gets a little rocky. Amen? Amen? And I'm talking about sometimes, I'm talking about some, some people in here. So, Brother Jesse, what do you mean? I said, well, here's what I mean. I mean that sometimes when certain people, sometimes maybe you get comfortable around another person, another brother or a sister in Christ, and you feel like it's okay because you're comfortable with each other to talk about another Christian. Uh-oh. You think it's okay. You think, well, uh, well, you get real comfortable around this. Bro, listen, I've seen it. You sit, maybe, maybe it's uh, you sit in the nursery or you're sitting on the grass cutting team that you're on or whatever the case may be. You start to talk and you start to, uh, you start to talk to each other and say, well, this about brother so-and-so, this about miss so-and-so. And let me just say this. Hey, listen to me in case you're just wondering. That's wrong. It's a sin. We're not here to sow discord. And I know that we're not all the same. Thank God. We're all different. We're all going to be different. We're all going to have different opinions. We're all going to have different outlooks on things. But everything that we do should be based around the Word of God. It should have biblical principles. It should have biblical uh, mindset. It should have biblical thoughts. It should have biblical uh, actions. Everything that we do when we get together and we fellowship together ought to be based around God's Word. And what I mean by that, he, He ought to be able to look at it and be pleased. He ought to be able to look at our conversation. And let me just say this, even between our husband and wife. What do you mean by that? Well, sometimes we get comfortable around our wife, our husband. We start running the preacher down. Talking about him. Well, Brother Jesse this. And listen, if you're not careful, you do it in front of the kids. Kids start getting that same mindset. Well, my mama said Brother Jesse preaches too long. My, my daddy said he don't preach long enough. Amen. I know brother. I know how Brother Benny feels about that. Amen. He don't tell anybody. He just tells me. Amen. But if we're not careful, listen, that can, that can destroy, destroy, destroy our church. Would you all agree that we've got a good thing going? Would y'all agree that we've got some uh, a lot of good things that are going on at Grace Baptist Church? I mean, the Lord's saving souls. He's changing lives. People are joining our church. People are turning their lives around uh, for the Lord. And listen, if we're not careful, if we're not real careful uh, about our fellowship and the things that we're saying about each other and the things that we're, how we're treating each other, hey, it could really run some people off real quick. Not only should it be based around the things of God, but should be fed by the Word of God. (laughs) 
you know, I, uh, when I, when I was lost and I, before I got saved and my aunt and uncle got saved and I would watch them, Brother Todd, I'd watch their life, their family, their home. And I remember, Brother Doug, when they got saved, how things changed in their home and how the word of God became, Brother Nathan became the center of their home. And I remember being a lost person, a lost young kid, seeing that and knowing how my home was and watching their home, thinking, man, when I get older, that's how I want my, play, that's how I want my family to be. I, listen, I was lost. I didn't even understand what I was talking about. I didn't even understand what I was thinking about. But you know what it was? It was the Word of God. It's powerful. Listen, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. And listen, everything that we do ought to be fed from the Word of God. How we go to church, how we discipline our children, how we give, how we tithe, how we come to church, how we dress, everything that we do should be fed from the Word of God. There's too many preachers today got too many opinions. Amen? Too many opinions. And you know what kind of preaching I like? Bible preaching. Amen? You know, there was... I'm trying not to get ahead of myself, but... On this table was one thing to eat on. That was bread. Plain bread. Now, it was seasoned and spicing, spiced... Spicened. I just made a new word. <laughs> Spicened. With frankincense. Which is a type of picture of the Holy Spirit. But it was, it was still just bread. There wasn't, there wasn't any kind of... There wasn't, there wasn't bologna and mayonnaise. Somebody say amen. And a mater. An onion. None of that. It was just bread. You know what that means? We don't need to add nothing to that book. That's all we need. Straight up. And we don't need to change nothing. We don't need a, We don't need a new method. We don't. We don't need to. Uh, we don't need to add a bunch of a, a, a whole bunch of uh, uh, glitter and all this stuff to it. No, it, it's fine like it is. We don't need to take anything from it. We don't need to add anything to it. It's good enough. Amen. That's all we need to feed on is the Word of God. That's all we need to focus on is the Word of God. Amen. Everything we do ought to be fed by that Word. Our fellowship ought to be based around the things of God. Our feeding should be based on the bread of life. But it ought to be flavored, spiced, amen, by that freaking sense, the Holy Spirit. It was the only type of food on the table. And that's all we need. You know, I worry sometimes about parents that will come. And listen, I understand that you want to have things for your kids and stuff. But that ought, that ought not be what you pick your church on. If we have a softball team or not. Amen. It, I, I'm, I'm not against those things. It, it, but but if, if, if you're wondering whether or not we, you know, what we have for your kids. I'll tell you what we have. We have preaching. Yeah. We, we take our kids to rallies where they preach. They do fun stuff. They do skits. We have fun. It's all good. We Listen, we have fellowships. We have outings. We do those things. But they're going to get preached to. It don't matter if it's going down the road in the van. On the way there, they're going to get preached to. At some point during the night, before we leave, we're going to preach to them. 
We're going to tell them about the Lord. We're going to tell them about purity. Amen. We're going to tell them about the things of God. We're going to tell them how good it is to serve the Lord. Amen. And that's, that's what we do. That's what, a, that's what a church should do. That's what we should be based on. I mean, some of these churches, I mean, they, they're, get, they're, they're getting so caught up in the activities. So many activities. Camp, uh, football camps and softball camps and uh, where's the preaching? Some of them are canceling the midweek service so they can do those things. That's not okay. I know it's not popular preaching tonight. That's why I didn't preach it Sunday morning. That's why I skipped it. Amen. But on that table is the bread that we feed on. And that incense which represents our worship. And that candlestick. And that candlestick, as we know, is a picture of the church. We get around the things of God together, fellowship together, we serve together. You said, some, you know, were you trying to start a cult? No. I just like Christian people. Amen. I want my kids to hang around y'all. I don't want them to hang around the people this, of this world. I don't want them. I don't want their best friends to be friends that they meet out. I want them to be right here. I want their heroes to be here. I want. I want. I want my. I want my daughter learning just like they did in Titus chapter number two. I want my little girl learning from the older women of the church. Amen. I want my son to learn from you men. That's what I want. That's my desire. I don't want them learning from I don't want them learning from their teachers at school or I don't listen I want them learning from here from the church because why that's how God set it up and we've gotten a long ways away from that I want my son's counselors and my son's people that he that he learns and gleans from to come right from here That's why every chance we get, this is where we are. Sunday night, we everybody left, and I, <clears throat> I just sat and sat in here, and I just thought about how good the Lord's been to this place, and how good God's been to me and my family and my home, and you know, I've always heard a lot of people say that my life don't revolve around church. Mine does, and I don't. I don't regret that. You say, "Well, you want me to want my life to? You do whatever you got to do." But I know that mine does, and I love it. I love it. My kids, they run through these halls and they play. They know every nook and cranny of this place. I love that. They know where all the snacks are. I'm sorry, Sunday school teachers. If you're missing snacks, it's probably my kids. If if your animal cracker stash is going down, it's my children. I know Miss Cindy's been robbed a few times. <laughs> but that's that's what I want. Amen. I want my kids to represent here. I want my family to be a picture of this place. Why? Because it's a good place. It's a great work. Amen. We shouldn't be ashamed of it. And we shouldn't be ashamed to fellowship with each other. 
I'm going to say this, and I'm almost done. Dylan, if you would come. It would do you some good. It would do you some good to make some friends with the people you go to church with. Because some of you come in here on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, y'all come in, sit here, and then you leave. It'd be good for you to just meet somebody. Meet another family. Go out to eat. Fellowship. Because I promise you this, those are going to be the ones when the times get hard, times get tough, those are going to be the ones you can call at 10, 11 o'clock at night. Church people. Brother Josh, Miss Jessica, if I can, I'm going to testify real quick, if that's okay. And I'm not saying any of this because it's, because it's me, but the other night I get a text message on a Sunday night about 8.30. I was wondering if you could talk. I said, well, do you need me to call, talk, or do you need me to come over kind of talk? Brother Josh said, well, if you could, if you're in the area, can I be honest, I wasn't. I was on the other side of Monroe. But I said, yeah, I'm in the area. Drove over there. And at about 10 o'clock on a Sunday night, I got to lead Miss Jessica to the Lord in their living room. She'd been having some doubts about her salvation. You know, when I walked out of that house, I said, Lord, thank you for letting me be the one to take a call. Thank you for letting me be that friend. Thank you for letting me be the one that is a part of their story for the rest of their life. The story that now their kids are going to know that night when the preacher came over that that's the night mama got saved in the living room. And that's going to be their story. I said, Lord, thank you for letting me be a part of that story. My kids, every time somebody comes over and we start telling guests in our house about all the work we had to do, they always tell them, Brother Benny came and worked at our house every day. I'm thankful for that. That he's a part of their story. If my car tears up, our kids know Brother Todd's going to fix our car. We, they don't know of any other mechanic shop in the world. The only one they know of is Brother Todd's shop. And that might not seem like a big deal to anybody else, but it is to me. And your teenagers ought to know that Brother Austin is their Sunday school teacher. And Miss Peyton is going to love them. She's going to be there for them girls. Brother Austin is going to be there for them boys. You, you couples, you ought to know that Brother Jeremy and Miss Beth are going to be there for you whenever you need them. Those of you that are in Brother Ed's class, you ought to know that, hey, if something happens, I need something, I can call him. He might run out of gas on the way, but he eventually will get there. I just want to say that y'all don't know how much it means to me to have this church as my family. Because you see, when I when I need a dad to talk to, I don't I can't just pick up the phone and call my talk to him about spiritual things. I can't. But there's men in here that I do. When I'm feeling down, like I was last night. Pulled up in Brother Ed's yard. 
I didn't even have anything to say. I didn't even know what to say. I just pulled up, went inside, sat down. That's what you need. Y'all need people like that in your life that you can fellowship with, that you can feed with. That you can say, hey, let's go one more mile. And then when you can't go one more, they're going to look at you and say, hey, let's go one more mile. That's what we need. Fellowship. Around the table. Around the things of God. Around the Word of God. And let it be honoring to Him. And I understand that some of you didn't grow up in church. And some of you, a lot of you didn't grow up in a church like this. I'm just going to say this to those of you that didn't. That's just the kind of church we are. That's just how we are. You know, I, we were driving home from Kentucky a few weeks ago. I was driving home by myself. I bet Brother Todd called me ten times. You still awake? You Okay. If anything happens, you you let me know. I'll come meet you. Nobody else did that. That's what we need. Amen. We need that closeness. How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like the anointing, he said. Amen. That's what we need. Let's all stand tonight. Here's the invitation. Here's the invitation tonight. I'm going to open up the altars. I want you to ask yourself tonight, have I been, have I been what I need to be for others? Or maybe you're in here tonight and you need somebody like that in your life. I want to invite you to come and just ask the Lord. Say, Lord, let me be what I need to be for others. And if you need somebody, won't you come and ask the Lord to put somebody like that in your life as He plays? Won't you come? Folks are coming. Lord, help me to be what I need to be for others. Help me to fellowship, be faithful. In the things of God, around the Word of God, let my conversation be pleasing unto the Lord. When I'm around other folks at church, whenever we're talking, let, let our conversation be pleasing to the Lord. Don't let it be anything that would hinder the work of God, that we would just uplift each other and other people. It's like that prodigal son that went away from home. And by the time he'd spent all his money and spent everything he had, he was, he was alone. But he knew the one place he could go to get what he needed, and that was home. And I'm glad this is my church home. that I go preach out or like if we're on vacation whatever I, I miss this place the whole time because this is this is our
our, this is our place. This is what we love. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the good spirit we've had in here. Thank you for the word of God. Lord, I, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that we can look at it and see where it applies to us. I'm, I'm thankful, Lord, for this table of showbread Lord that we that, that holds up our worship it holds up our fellowship it holds up our service it holds up the church and Lord I pray God that you'd help us to hold each other up and support each other and Lord I, I ask you Lord that you would just uh, go with us this week the rest of the week and be with us on Sunday God be with brother Brother Don, as he comes to preach, God, that you'd fill him with power and unction. I know that you will. God, that you'd use him. Fill him, Lord. Give us a good day on Sunday here at Grace Baptist. And Lord, I thank you for the good spirit we've had in here. And thank you for our visitors tonight, Lord. I, I'm honored that they would come and be a part of our services here tonight. And Lord, we sure do love you. We thank you. We praise you for your many blessings on us in Jesus' name. Thank y'all for coming, coming back. If y'all, y'all, uh, I don't know if a lot of y'all probably heard Brother Moore, Dwayne Moore preach. That's his cousin. Amen. He told me that, and I said, I see the resemblance. <laughs> Amen. You're better looking. Hey, I'll give you that, brother. I'll give you that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good to have the. I'm trying. I don't. I'm gonna pronounce it wrong. Le, the Leaser family with us tonight. We went by and visited them last night. Snuck up on him, Amen. He was out cutting the yard, and uh, I think we helped him. We helped. We got him out of out of cutting grass, Amen. <laughs> and uh, and so we had a good fellowship with them last night. And probably overstayed our welcome. Man, you know, you get me and brother Austin in there talking. It's like you know. All right, I appreciate y'all coming, but it's time to go. Amen. And uh, but no, I'm glad that they're here with us today, uh, tonight, and came back to visit with us. It was with us. Uh, Miss Leisure was with us all week for VBS, pretty much. And I told her we were grateful for that because of the class that she helped out in was like, um, you know, like like the movie 300. Uh, you know, they were trying to just hold them off. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> And uh, so, <clears throat> yeah, we, we appreciate her helping out there. But uh, anyway, y'all be here Sunday, okay? And uh, I know um, just uh, growing up and experience, I know when the pastor's out of town, it's kind of strange and different. But Brother Don Richards is going to do a phenomenal job, I promise you. I promise you. You don't want to miss hearing him preach. Uh, he's a man of God, and he's, uh, he's going to bless you. Amen. And then uh, Wednesday night, Brother Clark will be here. So y'all be faithful to be here, okay? Uh, be faithful to come and be a part of those services, all right? Uh, Brother Austin, let me see you real quick after church. Is, is Christopher here? Christopher's not here, okay. Okay, all right. I'll talk to him later then, amen? All right, Brother Doug, yes. Doug Everett, would you dismiss us in prayer? <laughs> 